Hello and welcome to an EI Suite video tip about downloading and installing EI Suite site. Note that you must first uninstall any previous versions of EI Suite. After that, you can download the installer from the EI Suite website and then run it, either run elevated if on the US Forest Service system or run as administrator on other systems. Now we'll go to the EI Suite website and download EI Suite site. You go to the site downloads link on the left hand side of the screen and when you get to that page you'll notice that there are usually two or three files that you can download. There's typically a patch file, a site production full install file, and an EI Suite site training install file. You will want to download the full production install and the patch. In order to do that, just click on the link for EI Suite site production full install. You'll get a warning that says you're now leaving the FAM IT portal and being redirected an external website that's okay and you'll be asked what you want to do with the file that you're downloading do you want to run it or save it and you should save it and just let it save to your default download location it'll take a little while for this to complete because it's a pretty large file it's about 312 megabytes in size when it's finished downloading you can close that window You'll still be on the website, so you can go ahead and download the patch file the same way. Click on the link for EI Suite Site Patch 4. OK to leave the, go to the external website. Save the file to your default download location again. And that one should just take a minute. That's a pretty small file. Typically, if you have an antivirus installed, it'll run a security scan on the file. That'll take a couple of seconds. You can close the FAM IT window and go to your download location, your default download location. And there's the two files that you've downloaded. You're now ready to go ahead and to install EI Suite Site. In order to do that, right click on the EI Suite Site executable file and pick either Run Elevated if you're on a US Forest Service system or Run as Administrator on all other systems. We'll pick Run as Administrator. It will make sure we know that it's going to make changes to your device. That's okay. When the installer gives you the welcome message, just click on Next, and then click on Install, and it will go ahead and install EI Suite Site. When the Install Shield Wizard completes, just click on Finish, and you've now installed EI Suite Site, and you'll notice you have two icons on your desk top that weren't there before, the Launch EI Suite Site icon and the EI Suite Data Folder icon. If you've downloaded a patch, you might as well go ahead and run that patch right after you finish the site installer so that you can get the patches applied before you run it for the first time. In order to run the patch, right click on the patch executable file and again, either pick Run Elevated if you're on a US Forest Service system or Run as Administrator if you're on a different system. It'll warn you it's going to make changes to your device, which is OK. And it will ask you, are you sure you want to apply EI Suite Patch 4? We'll say yes. So we'll just have to wait while that finishes. So now you're ready to go ahead and run EI Suite 
sight for the first time. A reminder, when you run EI Suite site for the first time, you have to first create a starter database with a master database password. And you must also create an account manager user ID and enter the password for that user ID. We'll launch EI Suite site and get the warning message. Accept the warning message and the system will automatically detect that this is our first run. And so it will bring up the Create Account Manager User window. You have to first enter your database name. Your initial database could be named for a specific incident or complex, such as Fox Creek. You could name your database Fox Creek DB. The database name must begin with an alpha character and cannot have any special any spaces or any special characters other than an underscore. The database password should follow the standard EI suite password rules, which are as follows. It must be at least 12 characters in length. It must contain at least one uppercase letter. It must contain at least one lowercase letter. It must contain at least one number. And must contain at least one of the following special characters. And there's about seven special characters that are allowed. So we'll go ahead and enter the database password. After you enter the database password, you've got to enter the username for your account manager. Now, since the account manager is a privileged user, the user ID must begin with AD period followed by the user's name or the user ID. Then go ahead and finish out the rest of the screen. Enter in your user, your unit ID. A password must follow the same rules that uh, we discussed a minute ago. So we'll go ahead and enter the password for the user ID and then save that. It'll take a few minutes to save it and when it completes you will have created your initial database. When it finishes saving that initial database, it'll bring up a statement of information security that reminds you of all the rules you have to follow as a privileged user. Click on Accept, and it will bring you into EI Suite. You'll note that your active database is Fox Creek DB. And your username that you're logged in with is that ad.userid, in my case, ad.bdamon. And you're brought to the home screen for a privileged user. And at this point, you could click on user accounts and go ahead and start creating users. You need to create at least one user with a regular profile, non-privileged, that's a data steward so that you have a user ID that can create incidents or import an incident from a ROS import file or bring in an incident from a data transfer. And that completes your first run of EI Suite site.